Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I believe all of you are doing very well, enjoying your studies and preparation for the exam. Hello everyone, just a quick nod before I proceed with this session if the audio visual is all good. Thank you Bhuva for that quick nod, thank you so much. So this is uh, Cardiology Simplified, this is part 2. I, uh, I believe all of you have attended the part 1. If not, you can still watch the part 1 of Cardiology Simplified session where we had some amazing concept based questions discussion which is available on the Unacademy Learning app as a recorded session. It's a free special class which is available to all of you irrespective of whether you are subscribed or not subscribed to Unacademy. Right? So please watch that session. It will really clear a lot of concepts in cardiology. So this is part two. These are the questions based on the test that we recently had on the telegram group. So as requested by many of you, I'm continuing the session here on the YouTube live session. And on the Unacademy Plus platform, uh, I am taking sessions on biochemistry, clinical questions, and we are trying to make biochemistry more interesting uh, to read and to learn, right? If not, I hope all of you know that the referral code Dr. Nikita will give you additional benefits while subscribing to Unacademy. And these are the links of all the sessions in cardiology that I've taken on Unacademy up till now. These are the sessions available to the Unacademy Plus subscribers. The links I have shared on the telegram group ecg diuretics myocardial infarction and infective endocarditis and these are the free sessions that i have taken there are sessions on murmurs please watch those sessions free for all you can watch them as recorded sessions it will clear all your concepts in murmurs all right so let's start with our uh, class the first question that we are going to discuss so basically our today's discussion will have questions which are lengthy questions but I'll tell you uh, cheat codes, tricks to solve such questions, right? So this is the question here. Please uh, type your answers in the live chat. I can see your answers here. Okay, Raksha says VSD. Raksha, no, it is not VSD. Look at the question. So the cheat code that we use when we have lengthy questions is we start reading from the last line. Many times it saves a lot of time for you. We saw in the recent FMG exam, the NEET PG 2020 exam, the trend of the questions has changed from one liner to lengthy questions, clinical scenarios, right? So to save your time, read from the last line, which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's dyspnea? So the last line is not serving any purpose. You know, I cannot mark the answer based on this. So then I read the second last line. On examination, he has RAS, there is wheezing, and there is a new 3 by 6 holosystolic murmur at the cardiac apex. So I do have some clues in the second last line, which is the holosystolic murmur, which is a new murmur. So let me rule out the options based on this itself that which of these in the options will lead to holosystolic murmur? Ventricular free wall rupture. Will it lead to holosystolic murmur? No, when there is ventricular free, free wall rupture, blood going out, so there will be cardiac tamponade that will lead to cardiac tamponade. It will not lead to a holosystolic murmur. Ventricular septal defect doesn't lead to a holosystolic or a pansystolic murmur. Yes, so I keep it in my options. Papillary muscle rupture, will it lead to holosystolic murmur? 
Yes, when there is papillary muscle rupture, that will lead to mitral regurgitation, that will lead to pansystolic murmur. Mitral regurgitation leads to pansystolic murmur. COPD, why will COPD by itself cause a pansystolic murmur? So I rule out COPD. Stent thrombosis. So from the option, I understand that the patient has undergone a coronary stent and if the stent has undergone thrombosis, it will present like your myocardial infarct, but it will not present with a holosystolic murmur. So I've ruled out this option as well, right? I've ruled out these options. So what I have in the options based on reading these two lines is either it is ventricular septal defect or it is a papillary muscle rupture. Now, for ventricular septal defect or papillary muscle rupture to develop. Now read the rest of the question. Now this is a smoker with chest pain, ECG may ST elevation here. So you know that basically this is MI. And this has developed three days later. This is three days later. Ventricular septal defect rarely can occur after the myocardial infarct if it involves the septum also, but it will take more time, more than three days to develop. So that is why I rule out ventricular septal defect also here and the answer becomes papillary muscle rupture. Is it clear with everyone? So the catch point here in the entire question is your holosystolic murmur three days after MI. So use these tricks which will actually save your time in solving the lengthy questions. You really need not read the entire question. It really, really, you know, it's a, it's a great cheat code to save times in the lengthy questions, right? So remember papillary muscle rupture leading to mitral regurgitation that presenting with pansystolic murmur and that's why the answer is papillary muscle rupture. Coming to the next question here, even this question many students found difficult. Use the cheat codes to solve such questions. So the question last line, which of the following pathologic abnormalities has the most likely developed in the allograft? So from the last line, I can gauge that the patient has undergone some graft, some transplant and after that the patient has developed a complication. And now I can see that the complication has developed five years later. Okay, so there is a 45 year old man who has received a cardiac allograft and five years later he has worsening exercise tolerance whatever it is. Now I jump to the echocardiography there is a reduced ejection fraction of 35%. So you can see that the complication has developed five years later and there is a reduced ejection fraction that means there is uh, there is your systolic dysfunction. So five years after receiving the cardiac allograft, the patient is having reduced ejection fraction that is the systolic dysfunction and majority of your allografts over a period of time they undergo coronary arteriopathy, coronary arteriopathy, all right. So like amyloidosis, amyloidosis leads to your restrictive cardiomyopathy. It's more of your diastolic dysfunction, okay. Then you have constrictive pericarditis, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, toxoplasmosis. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can occur after the transplant because of the immunosuppressants but generally it does not involve the heart so it is ruled out. Toxoplasmosis to occur after five years is, is a rare thing. The most important complication you have to remember here is coronary arteriopathy which is similar to your let's say myocardial infarct. Myocardial infarct generally it's your large vessels of the heart like your LAD, LCA, right coronary involved. In coronary arteriopathy, it is your small vessels in the heart which are involved, small arteries. But the final effect is the same like MI, there is decreased blood supply to the heart and that is what leads to the reduced ejection fraction. Okay, so please remember the answer here is coronary arteriopathy which is seen as a delayed complication after cardiac transplant and it presents with reduced ejection fraction similar to your myocardial infarct. It involves the small vessels in the heart. All right. It involves the small vessels in the heart. Right. Let's go to the next question. Do not get frightened by the lengthy questions. 
the more lengthy the questions i believe you have more chances of getting them right because they are more concept based so read the question and tell me what do you think would be the answer to this Yes, I'm waiting for the answer from all of you. What do you think is the answer to this? It's a it's a bit tricky question. Now, this is the question. which says that which of the following effects of regadenosone explains the nuclear stress test findings so from the last line if you do not read the entire question we get to know that there is a patient who has undergone a nuclear stress test for the heart by using regadenosone and there are some findings on this nuclear stress test so to answer this question i need to know the what are the findings so i see that the nuclear images demonstrate the nuclear images demonstrate decreased blood flow to the anterior wall of left ventricle after regadenosone infusion so what does the question say after giving regadenosone to the anterior wall of left ventricle there is decreased blood flow and a subsequent coronary angiogram demonstrates 80% narrowing of the left anterior descending artery with no significant flow obstruction in other coronary vessels right so what do i understand from this question is that there's a patient who has undergone a regadenosone uh, nuclear stress test and in that there is decreased blood supply to the left ventricle anterior wall and when i do an angiogram i see that there is 80% narrowing in the left anterior descending artery So the question is which of the following effects of regadenosone explains the nuclear stress test findings Okay so i see that who's got it right um it's dr mudit gupta who's got it right the answer is increased right coronary artery blood flow it is not increased afterload not increased heart rate not led narrowing now understand this concept of regadenosone nuclear stress test the concept is so when you give regadenosone basically we use drugs during the nuclear stress test like we use dipyridinol we use regadenosone these are basically which increase the stress on the heart both of them these are vasodilators all right these are vasodilators we can also use dobutamine for the uh, stress test because it increases the contractility of the heart by acting on the beta 1 receptors now regadenosone is a vasodilator and the angiogram is showing left anterior descending artery narrowing all right now i hope all of you know the phenomenon of coronary steel the phenomenon of coronary steel right so basically regadenosone is causing coronary steel in the lad territory why now suppose this is the lad which is narrowed all right it is narrowed 80% because of the narrowing in lad the vessels the small vessels distal to the lad in the resting state also they are dilated because they want to compensate for the narrowing so whatever little blood is coming in the remaining lumen of lad these vessels are dilated so that they can supply more blood to the affected territory so these vessels are already in the dilated state in the resting state now when i give regadenosone or dipyridinol which are vasodilators now these vessels distal to lad are already in a dilated state so they cannot dilate more but when there are other vessels jo hai jo rca hai lcx hai circumflex hai those vessels will dilate right those vessels will dilate so all the blood will divert to rca and lcx here it will not 
go because it has been stolen the blood has been stolen by the dilated rca and the lcx and that is why after giving regardinosone we see the decreased blood supply in the lad territory where there is narrowing so basically the rca and the lcx they are doing the coronary steal because they dilate and they steal all the blood from the lad so because of the coronary steal phenomenon there is decreased blood supply in the ischemic area because ischemic area already has dilated vessels they cannot dilate more so i hope now you understand that so the answer is it is increased right coronary artery blood flow because of the coronary steal phenomenon because of the coronary steal phenomenon many of you thought that the answer is left anterior descending narrowing agreed that the patient has left anterior descending narrowing but it is not the effect of regardinosone the question is asking which of the following effects of regardinosone explains the findings not what pathology in the patient the patient has this pathology but it's not because of regardinosone regardinosone is only increasing and stealing away the blood from the led is this concept understood by everyone so please remember this concept of coronary steal phenomenon if you have understood this concept give me a quick thumbs up so that i can go ahead and proceed with the next question so it was a bit of tricky question that is why reading the question carefully is very 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 important we generally tend to make silly mistakes by not reading the question very carefully all right so remember it is the coronary steal phenomenon caused by regardinosone right let's go to the next question now this is the next question it was asked in a different way not the same way in the last neat pg exam neat pg 2019 and uh, this is a different way of asking the same question please read the question and tell me what do you think is the answer to it so again a lengthy question use the cheat code last line which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's dysphagia so i know that the patient is uh, the question is asking about a patient who has dysphagia and they are asking the cause of dysphagia when i look at the options mitral valve stenosis pulmonary valve stenosis regurgitation of aorta occlusion of posterior interventricular artery occlusion of anterior interventricular artery so i know that basically they are trying to ask the cardiac cause of dysphagia when i see this you know aapke mind ke bal dimag ke bal shuru ho jana chahiye chalu ho jana chahiye cardiac cause leading to dysphagia very very important is your what chamber enlargement what chamber enlargement it is your left atrial enlargement right it is your left atrial enlargement so this was the question which was asked in the last knee pg exam enlargement of which chamber of the heart causes an impression on the esophagus all right so it is the left atrial enlargement i'll show you the image why because left atrium is the closest to the esophagus now if you read the question it says that radiologic studies reveal significant cardiac hypertrophy and on a barium swallow it reveals esophageal constriction directly posterior to the heart so we know that they are talking about left atrial enlargement and we see left atrial enlargement in mitral valve stenosis right so this is the mitral valve we have the mitral valve here the stenosis leads to enlargement of the left atrium the left atrium compresses on the esophagus so that is why we get dysphagia clear with everyone yes so we have already seen in my radiology session the signs of left atrial enlargement this is a very very important image which i want to show all of you what modality is this what investigation is this which you are seeing this is a contrast enhanced ct where you are seeing that this is the bone which is white this is the descending aorta which is white and this is the heart which we are seeing right that's the heart which we are seeing they can ask you the question in ct anatomy identify the heart chambers 
right so we see that just posterior to the sternum the anterior most chamber of the heart is the right ventricle if this is the right ventricle this becomes the right atria if this is the right atrium this becomes the left atria and this becomes the left ventricle right so now you can see that can you tell me what structure is this what structure is this here let me highlight this structure this highlighted structure in yellow what is that so you can see this structure is just posterior to the left atrium it is to the right of the aorta just in front of the vertebra so this is your esophagus all right so that's the esophagus all right that's the esophagus yes nandini you can see that how it is there it is the left atrium and just behind the left atrium we are seeing the esophagus so that is why when the left atrium enlarges it pushes the esophagus behind and that is why it will cause an impression on what wall of the esophagus anterior wall or the posterior wall what wall of the esophagus what constriction or what impression will you see it will be on the anterior wall of the esophagus right it will cause an impression on the anterior wall of esophagus we have seen in one of the kbmd episodes kon banega md if you have missed those sessions again all of those are available on an academy learning app free sessions please watch those sessions we had seen in that session the posterior impression on esophagus can you tell me the cause of posterior impression on the esophagus posterior impression on esophagus basically so what will you see in that case is in that case you will see a structure passing behind the esophagus and it is compressing the posterior wall of esophagus very good raksha absolutely right so that is your that is your aberrant right subclavian artery that is arsa and we know that aberrant right subclavian artery arsa leads to dysphagia lusoria it leads to dysphagia lusoria absolutely right you guys are amazing so that is your dysphagia lusoria so you have the aberrant right subclavian artery which goes behind the esophagus it comes from the left and it goes to the right by going behind the esophagus all right and now this investigation can you tell me what investigation is this is it a chest x ray or is it not a chest x ray what is this so here you can see this is the esophagus which is containing the white contrast that is the barium so this is right this is the barium swallow right that's the barium swallow this is not a plain chest x ray and you can see the esophagus is pushed back because of the chamber of the heart here which is the left atrium okay so this is your barium swallow showing the barium swallow showing the indentation on the anterior wall of esophagus it is because of the left atrial enlargement so i hope now all of you will remember that left atrium enlargement will cause anterior esophagus indentation arsa will cause posterior esophagus indentation all right so that is why the answer here is mitral valve stenosis now if i show you this radiograph a related radiograph was asked in the recent fmg exam and it was if you see very very carefully here if you see carefully here in this radiograph this structure here a metallic round thing which you see here that is your prosthetic mitral valve okay that's your prosthetic mitral valve which was asked in the recent fmg exam can you tell me what other finding do you see here and what is the diagnosis in this patient very good raksha absolutely right so on the right side we see that there are two borders this is one border and this is the second border so we see the double right heart border or the double density sign and this is seen in which chamber enlargement this is very favorite with the examiners 
so again this is your left atrial enlargement when the left atrium enlarges it comes over on the right side as you can see it will come over on the right side and you will see the double density sign or the double right heart border the supporting clue here is that the patient has had mitral valve prosthetic there is a prosthetic mitral valve which is there which tells you that the patient has undergone surgery for a mitral valve pathology all right so that is your double atrial shadow double right heart border double density sign which is seen in left atrial enlargement very 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 important image very frequently asked in the exam all right let's go to the next question so again a very logical question even if you have not read about it you should be able to answer this question if you think logically trust me in the exam there would be many questions where you'll feel that you have not read this but still you can get them right if you are calm and if you think logically what do you think is the answer to this thank you so much raksha for that appreciation i am glad i can ignite that spark in you to study more you know studies actually are very interesting especially the medical studies when you read it very clinically oriented very good so the correct answer here is left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line i read from the last line at which of the following locations will the needle best be inserted to relieve the tamponade do i really need to read the rest of the question not at all even if i don't read the rest of the question at all i will be able to solve this question so you can see that how in each question i can save 1 minute 2 minute and it really saves me a lot of time in the exam so this was the difficulty which majority of the fmg students also faced and the neat pg candidates also faced in their exam use this trick read the last line so the question is to relieve the tamponade which is the best location to put the needle now very very logically thinking of course when you relieve when you want to relieve the tamponade that is surrounding the heart you will put the needle in the dependent part so that you you know you relieve the majority of the fluid from the pericardial cavity dependent part means that it cannot be a higher intercostal space right it cannot be a higher intercostal space it cannot be a very low intercostal space because we know that surrounding the heart is the lungs and the pleura so i cannot injure the pleura and the lungs so it has to be somewhere between not very high not very low that is why i rule out the third intercostal space because it is located high so it's not a dependent portion i rule out the seventh intercostal space the sixth intercostal space because sixth seventh intercostal space i might injure the lung and the pleura so that is why the best is your left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line if this is not in the option the other approach that we do for pericardial cavity is your sub xiphoid location right in the sub xiphoid location or in the left fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line all right so remember around not the second intercostal space to relieve the cardiac tamponade second intercostal space is for your pneumothorax because pneumothorax air will be up because it has a low density so air will rise up tamponade is blood it is fluid so it will be in the dependent portion so lower down in the fifth intercostal space right in the mid clavicular line next one let's go to this question if you read this question carefully you'll be able to solve this question it's a very easy question we have discussed in the part 1 cardiology special class please watch that session as well so use the cheat code read the last line if not sufficing then go to the second last line now what is the question the last line says in exposing this artery to perform the bypass procedure which accompanying vessel is most susceptible to injury 
I see the options is related to the cardiac vein. So to know which vein I will injure, I need to know which is the artery that we are performing the surgery at or which is the location that we are performing the surgery. Second last line, coronary arteriography reveals near total blockage of the posterior descending interventricular artery. So it is the posterior descending interventricular artery. Now I hope all of you will know this. Yes. So posterior descending interventricular artery we have seen in the last special class of cardiology. Posterior kya rata hai? Posterior kaun si vein rati hai? Posterior is your middle cardiac vein, right? Posterior is your middle cardiac vein. We have seen this, right? Very good. Manu Surya, we have seen in the last session. Anterior kaun sa rata hai? Anterior in the forefront are the great people. Right, great people are always on the forefront. So, great cardiac vein is located in the anterior interventricular sulcus. So, anterior raha to great. Posterior, what is the cheat code to remember, the mnemonic to remember? Posteriorly located is the spine, and spine is in the middle, right? So, in the posterior part of the body, we have the spine which is located in the middle of the body, right? So, posterior interventricular sulcus, it's your middle cardiac vein. Similar cheat code I told you to remember in the foramen of the skull. There is a session on foramen of skull also available on an academy I've taken. Middle meningeal artery, it goes through the which foramen? Middle meningeal artery, it goes through which foramen in the skull? Middle and in the middle we have the spine. So it goes through foramen spinosum. It goes through foramen spinosum, right? And we know that rupture of middle meningeal artery leads to extradural hemorrhage. It leads to extradural hemorrhage, right? So please remember, this is how you correlate, integrate everything and remember difficult things. So anterior is the great cardiac vein. Posterior is the middle cardiac vein and out of these veins if I give you these options and I ask you which of the following vein does not drain into the coronary sinus which of the following vein does not drain into the coronary sinus what will be the answer to that we have seen this also when we saw the coronary circulation last time Yes, that's your anterior cardiac vein. We know that anterior cardiac vein drains directly into the right atrium. It drains into the right atrium. It's not the small cardiac vein. Raksha, if you have missed the last cardiology session, watch that session. All right, we have discussed this already. Let's go to the next question. Very, very important point in your uh, embryology, the aortic arch derivatives. The proximal part of the internal carotid artery is derived from which of the following? I am sure this question comes as a relief. When you see such lengthy questions, this question seems to be very, very short. Right? We have seen the mnemonic for this as well. Carotid is alphabet C. C is your third alphabet or the third letter. So, this is your aortic arch 3 right so remember 3 is the third alphabet a b c that is carotid we have seen it is it is carotid right now if i change the question and i ask you ductus arteriosus develops from which of the following arch ductus arteriosus develops from which of the following arch Absolutely right. So please remember your ductus arteriosus, it develops from the 6th aortic arch. Which 6th aortic arch? Right or the left? Right or the left? It is from the left 6th aortic arch. Very, very important question again. We know that you have the aorta, you have the pulmonary artery. And joining the two is your ductus arteriosus. It is present on the left side. Aorta left mein hota hai. So ductus arteriosus bhi left mein hai. So it comes from the left sixth aortic arch. Okay, left sixth aortic arch. If I ask you which of the following arches contributes to the development of 
the arch of aorta which contributes to the development of a part of arch of aorta yes arch of aorta very good kaushal kishore it is the fourth aortic arch so to remember this the cheat code is when you say arch of aorta arch is your four lettered word right arch has four letters four alphabets a r c h so the arch develops from the fourth the fourth aortic arch okay yes the left fourth absolutely right so these are some of the cheat codes carotid internal carotid c is 3 arch is four four lettered and ductus arteriosus on the left side so it develops from the left sixth arch let's go to the next question again we are back to the lengthy question use the tricks to solve the question so which of the following cardiac structures will most likely be injured i look at the cardiac structures right ventricle right atrium apex of left ventricle left atrium and the obtuse margin of the left ventricle when i read the question it is a blunt trauma to the sternum right so basically the trauma is coming anteriorly to the sternum there is a trauma so which cardiac structures will most likely be injured if the injury is anterior so basically what i told you just now when we saw the ct ka image the anterior most chamber of the heart which is the anterior most chamber of the heart absolutely right it's the right ventricle so that is why the answer is right ventricle because it is located just behind the sternum so if i show you this radiograph where which they can very much ask you to identify the heart chambers and the heart borders here you can see that all right so on the right side you can see the right heart border is in majority by the right atrium remember that right ventricle is not contributing to the right heart border very very important question then you have the superior vena cava and inferiorly there will be inferior vena cava on the left side you have the left ventricle which contributes to the majority of the left heart border so if you do the lateral radiograph you can see that just behind the sternum here is your right ventricle so when there is a injury to the sternum your right ventricle will be injured your right ventricle will be injured okay and you can see that the posterior most chamber of the heart here is the left atrium which compresses the esophagus if it is enlarged now if i change this question right if i change this question to which of the following cardiac structures will most likely be compressed not injured i change the question to which of the following cardiac structures will most likely be compressed then the answer will be then the answer will be right atrium why right atrium because it has low pressures because it has low pressures so whatever has low pressures it will be compressed easily because here the patient has cardiac tamponade so tamponade will press the cardiac chambers right atrium has low pressures so it will be the it will be the right atrium it has low pressures so it will be the right atrium which will be compressed so read the question very carefully while answering such questions all right again a quick revision for all of you this is your contrast enhanced ct ct the bones are white the blood vessels are white just behind the sternum you have the right ventricle that is why it will be injured then you have the right atrium which will be compressed this is the left atrium and this is the left ventricle now if i ask you what is this structure here what structure is this identify that structure let me zoom this image can you see this structure here what structure is that so you 
can see that this structure is related to the left atrium. It is related to the left atrium. And we know the vessel which drains into the left atrium is your pulmonary vein. Ye pulmonary vein hai. Pulmonary vein hai. Right side ki left side. Ye right side hai. Ye left side hai. So this is your right pulmonary vein. This is your right pulmonary vein which is going into the left atrium. Alright. Next question. So this is the last question for our discussion. Related to your ECG in myocardial infarct. ECG in MI. Shown below is an ECG from a patient with chest pain. ECG findings are most likely caused by ischemia involving the which coronary artery. So this is our favorite with the examiners. They'll give you an ECG. They'll ask you the territory. So you only have to look for Always hunt for ST elevation kahan dikh raha hai. Quickly hunt for where do you see the ST elevation. Right? So if I hunt for it, I can see the ST elevation. Tell me what do you think? Which territory is it? Why the right coronary artery? Why the right coronary artery? Look for ST elevation. Look for ST elevation not ST depression. Guys, this is a basic ECG question. Please do not make mistake here. First, tell me in which leads absolutely right. You can see the ST elevation here. If I uh, zoom this ECG a bit, right? We can see the ST elevation here, right? In lead one. If I see ST elevation in lead one, always check for rest of the leads related to lead one. जो कि आपका लैटरल वॉल में आता है लीड एवीएल आई कैन सी द एस टी एलिवेशन इन लीड एवीएल इन योर लीड थ्री यू आर सींग द एस टी डिप्रेशन इन योर लीड वी वन यू आर सींग द एस टी डिप्रेशन एज आई सेड कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन एस टी एलिवेशन एस टी डिप्रेशन आर द रेसिप्रोकल चेंजेस सो यू आर सींग इन लीड वन यू आर सींग इन लीड एवीएल सो आई नो लीड वन एवीएल एल इज योर लैटरल वॉल L is your lateral wall and I know that the lateral wall of the left ventricle is supplied by the left circumflex artery. So basically it is your anterolateral wall, left circumflex artery. Anterior descending artery agar hota, to you would see ST elevation in V1 to V4. Here you are seeing ST depression, not ST elevation. Lateral wale mein check for 1, AVL, V5 and V6. Right coronary artery, right coronary artery will generally lead to your inferior wall MI. Inferior or the posterior wall MI. And the left main coronary artery, main matlab, it divides into LAD and LCX, both will be involved. So, you can see the, you know, this ST elevation is staring in your eyes. Lead 1, lead AVL, I see these two leads. I know that it is lateral wall, so this is circumflex. Right, your left main coronary artery divides into the LAD and into the LCX. LCX, the left circumflex is the one which goes laterally. Anterior descending goes anteriorly. So that is why the answer is left circumflex artery. Right? So yes, that was about our cardiology discussions. We had few more questions in the test. But they were much easier, so I have not included in the discussion. Please solve more questions on ECG. There are free sessions, as I told you, available on the Unacademy app. I have covered murmurs in detail with all the cheat codes and the images that can be asked. We have had a KBMD episode on ECG, right? We have had a KBMD episode on ECG, very, very important. Apart from that, I have taken three sessions on ECG available for the plus subscribers if you are not subscribed if you are subscribing to an academy i hope all of you know the referral code dr nikita for additional discount so you will have the next session with me is tomorrow all right so tomorrow 8 a.m we have the session third session we are discussing biochemistry the clinical questions uh, you know the analysis the analytical questions 
strategic questions in biochemistry so we have the third session we are done with two sessions of biochemistry so all the plus subscribers please take a note we have a session tomorrow morning 8 am for rest of the special classes and the free classes we will have a youtube live session again on tuesday 6 pm right tuesday 6 pm we will have a youtube live session and your free class on an academy is on 28th of september all right for any queries feel free to reach out to me i'm available on the telegram group as well you can drop me a message on the an academy platform as well and yes that's all for today i hope you all have uh, enjoyed the session uh, yes arun we will do we are done with cardiology discussion next we had test on biochemistry and hematology so we will do sessions biochemistry i'm already taking on the plus course and we will do the hematology discussion soon all right so that's all for today guys i hope you have enjoyed the session See you, goodbye, take care, keep studying, keep revising and keep